Hi, everybody. Dr. Susan Brown, director of the Center for Better Bones. You know, I'm really glad that you're with us today because today I'm going to introduce a whole new series of videos. And these series consider the topic of ancient science meeting modern science. As many of you know, my first profession was and is as an anthropologist. While I work as a nutrition, I was first trained as an anthropologist. And one of the fascinating things when you look around the world and when you look through time, you see that ancient cultures had a great deal of wisdom about life, about nutrition, about medicine. And in this series, we're going to look at ancient science some of the things they were saying and how they're now being val validated by modern science. One of the first places I saw this was with meditation and the value of meditation. Many years ago, I got to study with Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, the founder of TM, and he really brought to America a great scientific focus on meditation. And they have done thousands of studies showing that meditation can affect our blood pressure, it can affect our level of happiness, it can affect our immune system, it can affect our DHEA level. Thousands of studies showing the value of meditation. We now know in the field of nutrition, all of us have heard of turmeric as a wonderful herb, a wonderful food that has so many capacities to boost immunity, reduce inflammation, countless studies on turmeric. And again, this was an ancient food item, an ancient herb from the ancient system of India, actually. Traditional Chinese medicine has volumes of knowledge. And what we're finding today is that much of this ancient, what we would call wisdom-based knowledge, is now being validated by modern science. And today, I'm really delighted that we have with us an expert in nutrition and an expert in the internal ecology of our body. This is Marty Whitakim. Marty's a nutritionist. We've been colleagues for decades now, and it's really so much fun to introduce her again to you. She has two great books, one on probiotics and one actually on this whole issue of proton pump inhibitors. Today, we're gonna kind of focus on this issue of the internal ecology of the gut. And the topic we're gonna to talk about is this fascinating topic of fecal transplants. These ancient cultures use this system of putting actually fecal material from one animal or one human into another animal or another human, and they saw great healing results. Now, this is an example of something we would say is very strange, and yet modern sciences has validated that. So, Marty, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Now, Marty, tell us a bit about the just a little bit about the historical use of this strange concept of fecal transplants and then some of the modern uses of it and why maybe you can help people see why i'm so fascinated with this well going back to the fourth century in china the first recorded that we know about they had a remedy called yellow soup this was an oral way of taking the fecal contents of uh, either a healthy person or an animal, making it into a soup and then having the very ill person drink it. Well, not only is there a very high yuck factor <laughs> that, that is off-putting, but uh, I, I am sure that for uh, all of those centuries and millennia, the doctors, uh, uh, scientific-based doctors, thought this was looney tunes. Mm -hmm. and now, just uh, fairly recently, somebody, and I, I have to say, I don't know who, somebody decided, well, what about this horrible disease, the C. difficile, that so oh often God. is acquired in a hospital uh, after antibiotics, mm -hmm. it's a diarrhea be stopped. And it's often fatal. I mean, people die from C. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. They just can't control it. And um, it's resistant to antibiotics. So out of desperation, they tried taking the fecal contents in from a healthy person and putting it in this sick, sick person. Uh -huh. Basically did a poop transplant. A poop transplant, right? Very technical terms. And the uh, person got well, and they didn't have a recurrence, which is so often the case with C. diff, because 
that that bacteria leaves spores behind, which are kind of like seeds. And so maybe you kill it off with an antibiotic and then a week or two or a month later, it comes back. Again. I see. The seeds come back. And I saw that research saying that 90% of C. diff was cured with this fecal transplant. I mean, this is a deadly disorder that you acquire from being in hospitals, getting an infection, taking too many antibiotics. And it was cured, like you say, on a permanent basis. And almost instant. Instant. I had a client who had a, a very case of very severe case of colitis and she she and her husband flew to Florida where you could do this and they did it. They freeze dry the fecal material of the husband, inserted it in the woman and within days she was remarkably better. And uh, they're struggling now to find a more socially acceptable way to do it, to take the bacteria, but it isn't just the bacteria, the thousands of different strains that are in our microbiome, but there's also the things that they make because they make selective, very sophisticated antibiotics and organic acids and enzymes and all these things that I collectively named in that first book, Natural Alternatives to Nexium. I, I called it postbiotics because there are hundreds, if not thousands, of substances the bacteria make that are very healing. So when you do the entire contents, it's a lot different than just taking a probiotic because you're getting everything. You know, that's such an interesting contribution everyone should know that Marty made was actually to say it's not just the bacteria, but it's all that the bacteria do, all they produce, all they leave behind, all even the information they give us that then has a big impact. So it's not just, it, it we'll have a hard time isolating those strains of bacteria, putting those, inserting those into a person's rectum, as opposed to that whole natural organic process. This is so fascinating. And to me, what it does is it reminds us of the great respect for these traditional systems and kind of maybe causes us to open our, wink our eyes a little and say, gosh, maybe we should look at some of these other ancient techniques and see what we can learn from them. Well, exactly. I always say that the Chinese came up with a lot, and this is true of the Indian culture. You can look at any ancient culture. They had thousands of years without television. So they, had, they really paid attention <laughs> to what was going on around them. You know, oh, if you do this, then this happens. And that's really the basis for modern science is you have to suspect something to ask the question to start doing the study. So they did all that. And they also observed nature. You see, they really, they didn't have television. They didn't have the computer. They spent time watching nature. And they realized we were just a part of nature. I am so sorry for the dog. <laughs> That's okay. That, that dog we're apparently being attacked by a squirrel. <laughs> but Marty, tell us now, the some implications for bone health. Marty, as I remember, has got a great book, The Probiotic Cure, and it really is, it is a marvelous book on this whole question of the bacteria in the body, how 99, 90% of our cells are bacteria cells. Um, I always joke that we're a walking compost heap and that this has many implications for bone. So Marty, as we close this little short video, tell us a little bit about how bone is influenced by all these bacteria. Uh, any number of ways, and we're probably just beginning to discover, but uh, they certainly help us to absorb the nutrients that bone is built out of, the, right, right, right. not just the calcium, but the magnesium and the manganese and the boron and the zinc and, and all of that. Uh, has some relationship to vitamin D. Uh, the bacteria oh, actually it's make it's vitamin K2, which is an important right. book factor. Mm -hmm. And it's anti-inflammatory, so it's probably helping with that whole bone remodeling I system. Think, I, I think I heard one of the biggest impacts was anti-inflammatory, that with these, these probiotics actually, these bacteria actually help us reduce inflammation by their activities in the body. And osteoporosis is largely inflammatory. And um, uh, even help in the case there's been a fracture, uh, helps a lot with recovery and uh, it helps with the mood, it makes energy so that you feel like exercising, which of course is a factor. Uh, we probably could go on and on. They're just an integral part of our instruction manual. Yes, that's a good way to put it. They carry a lot of information that is very valuable and they produce a lot of material and knowledge that's important to us. You know, I want to thank you very much for being the first guest and this, this whole series, which I'm going to do on modern science and ancient science, modern science kind of catching up with ancient science. 
Um, and what we're going to do, everyone, if you've enjoyed this little chat, Marty and I are going to continue on uh, a longer video on YouTube. So we can check out those of you who have to leave now. Otherwise, we'll give you a link to YouTube and we'll keep in touch. Marty, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure for sure. Great. Everyone be well. Talk later. Uh, if you want to take a little break, I'll close the door so we don't have a doggy thing. Can we do a... Okay, yeah, I think Jean can link those two together. Sure. Let's do it. I will shut this thing off.